Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. Do go and check out the channel. We've got several hundred videos up there all about hand embroidery. So go and check that out and see if there's something that will interest you there. So in this video today, I thought we would look at some different embroidery threads and to compare them. So I have done videos on, on a couple of different types of threads previously, um, but I thought it would be interesting to look at them together and see what the differences are and then talk about how to use them and how to choose which one you might want to use. So I've chosen 10 different types of threads. This is by no means everything that is available, but it's a good selection across the board of different types. And I'm going to stitch them on this design here. So I've just made some circles and I'm going to use the same stitch for every type of thread so that we can compare them and see what they look like. Um, and I've just given myself a bit of a head start and done some stitching around the edge of the circle. I'm going to use a satin stitch because that's quite good for you to be able to see what the thread looks like um, in its and it's sort of most pure state if you like. Um, so to do that I've just worked um, a split stitch around the edge first um, and I'm going to work over that split stitch. We have got a video um, about satin stitch if you want to know why I'm doing a split stitch underneath it. Um, so I've done that for most of them. There's a couple I've done something slightly different and I'll talk about that when I get there. So I've done that first so you don't have to watch me do that. So let's jump straight in with the first type of thread. So the first thread that I want to show you um, is a stranded cotton or a floss, depending on where you are in the world. So this is what I'm going to use here. You may be very familiar with this. Um, we've got a video all about it, how to use it, what it's good for, how to choose how many strands. So do check that out, put that up here in the corner. Um, so I'm going to use this first. And the reason I'm using it first is because it's a really versatile thread. It's ginger cat helping me out, um, do you mind? Hey. wobbling everything. Okay, it's not helping me out. <laughs> Bye. Doesn't want to help me out today. So where did I get to? Um, okay, so stranded cotton. Um, it's very um, easily um, easy to get this this thread. I can't, I can't speak now. It's put me off. Okay, so stranded cotton, so um, very versatile thread, um, easy to get hold of all over the world. Um, it's inexpensive as well, massive choice of colours as well. So this is a really good thread for lots of types of embroidery um, and it's easy to use as well. So I've um, chosen three strands. Now it comes in six strands um, and I've taken out three and I'm going to use three. So you can use how many, however many you want to use with this. You've got one to six, you've got lots of choice. You can mix your colours as well in your needle so if you've got three strands you can have three different colours in the needle so I'm going to try three and I'm starting in my standard where I do my knot and my two small stitches and that knot will get cut off later I'm just going to come up on the outside of my split stitch right across the circle and down on the other side and then I go back round to the same side and do the same so it's quite a tough thread, this. It will take quite a lot of wear and tear. As I said, it is inexpensive, so if you go wrong and have to take it out, it's not going to cost you a lot of money to do that. These variegated ones are really nice as well because you don't quite know what colour you're going to get. And I'm just going to go right across the circle. And that edge just helps me to get a nice, even edge to my stitching. So just putting that stitch underneath and stitching over it. It's a mercerized cotton as well, so it's got an extra shine on it. It's extra smooth, so it'll go through your fabric really nicely and just a very easy thread to use. Good if you want to practice as well, so you're not using expensive threads to practice with. You've got lots of choice with the colours. You've got lots of choice with how many strands that you want to use in there. It's a really good all-round thread. Lots of different makes of it did do a video on a cheap version as well, see if that was any good, so you don't have to spend a lot of money. I've just gone to the other side, started a second thread off, because I ran out of the first, but you can see the effect that that variegated has, it makes nice stripes, but it's a nice smooth finish to it, it's mercerised as I said, so it's got a nice shiny finish to it, it goes in really nicely, easy to stitch with, it's not knotting up, 
Remember, don't make your thread lengths too long. And there's one final stitch in the end. Okay, so that's stranded cotton, so that gives us a really good place to start. So let's see what the next one looks like next to it. Okay, so the second one I want to look at is um, a purlay thread. So this one happens to be a DMC one. So if you see my hard anger videos, you will have seen me use this one quite a bit in there. Um, so it's a twisted thread and it's cotton as well. Again, it's mercerized, um, so it's got a nice shine to it. So this one isn't made of a separate strand you put together. It's already twisted, so you just use it as it is. So I've got one here like this. Now I'm making a decision about how many strands of it I use. So with the stranded cotton, I used um, three strands. With this, I'm just gonna use it on its own as it is. You can double it up if you wanted a thicker thread. But this one is thick, it comes in different sizes, and this is a number eight that I'm using. I've got that in um, an embroidery number five needle. So let's see what this one looks like. Again, just going to go straight across my circle. So you might want to consider the size of the thing you're stitching with the size of the thread. So this is a thicker thread and I'm doing a thicker, thicker circle, a bigger circle with it. So you can help choose your thread that way if you want to think of it like that. Is If I've got a larger element, do I need to fill it in a little bit quicker? You can use a fine thread for a larger element, it'll take you longer and you'll use more thread. But if you want fine details, that's fine. And you can see that sort of pattern coming now of the twist in the thread. So the stranded look quite nice and smooth because it wasn't twisted. This is twisted, so it gives you more of a texture. It's nice to stitch with. Goes in quicker because it's thicker. So I'll do a little bit more and then we'll see what that texture looks like. So I've got to just mention with this one that I didn't do a split stitch around the edge, I did a back stitch. That's because this thread is a little bit thicker and if you do a split stitch it suddenly started to get really thick on top of the surface and you get a raised satin stitch, which is fine, that's another technique. So I just did a um, back stitch instead, so I've still got an edge to go over but not one that was going to be really bulky. So take that into consideration as well with how thick your thread is and what, it, what effect doing something like a an outline underneath will have on it. So I'll just finish that last little bit off. Nice to stitch with this one, quite a tough thread. If you're a bit of a breaker of threads, if you're prone to breaking your threads, then ginger cat jumping off the table, mobbling my frame. This is a good one to use. It won't break on you this one. And it gets a nice textured finish to it. So not so smooth and shiny, this one. We'll look at some of those in a minute. A really nice solid thread with a really nice texture on it. So that's a perlay thread. So the third one I want to try is called a cotton abroder. Now it's very similar to the perlay. Um, so it's a twisted um, single. You should don't strand this one like you don't strand the perle as well so you use it as it comes off the skein and this has got more plies in it so the the um, perle is two ply and the cotton embroidery is three or four ply so much finer um, pieces of thread plied together so it's got a twist to it but not as obvious as the perle one so we shouldn't get that texture on it so this is one I'm going to use here so this is cotton embroidery this is one I actually dyed myself <laughs> red cabbage and lemon juice so I've got quite a nice gently variegated colour here so I'm going to use this one and I've doubled it up now um, it's quite fine it's much finer than the um, DMC Perle I used so I'm going to use two strands of it it does come in different weights of thread and the Perle does as well by the way so you can have a thicker thread of both of these if you want to so I'm going to try it with two and I'm expecting this to look a bit smoother got two to keep together now so 
stitch carefully. I do like stitching with this thread. It's great for things like black work as well, if you like to do black work. And because I've got the two strands together in this, they're going to twist up a little bit. So I'll try and keep them flat. So you could just use the one. So I decided that the two threads together didn't actually look very good. It's come out a little bit uneven, so I switched to one. And even though it's a finer thread and it takes more filling in, I think it looks much better. That's really nice and smooth. So it's always a good idea to have a bit of an experiment with these. You don't always know what's going to be the right thread. And if you wanted a thicker thread, rather than double it up, get a thicker weight instead. Because that didn't really work. This is much more successful with the single thread, but it's really lovely to stitch with this. It's mercerized as well, so nice and smooth. Very nice to stitch with. And that looks really beautiful and smooth. If I just run that needle over and flatten that down, you can see how this side is much better than this side. So always have a bit of experiment to see what's the right amount of thread to use. So this one we're going to use a part, a mixed thread. So we're going to use a lana or a vermilana um, thread. So this is a 50% acrylic and a 50% wool. So it's got all the really lovely features of wool, but it's really strong and doesn't keep breaking and isn't all thick and thin like wool is. So I'm going to use this one here. This is it. Really beautiful and soft. It's very fine. So if you're familiar with a cruel wool, which we'll look at in a second, this is probably about half of that weight. So it's a very fine thread. And I've stitched a lot of YouTube projects in this, so you can see me using this quite a lot. Used it in the princess and the not the princess and the pea, Rapunzel, Rapunzel video. So you can see me using this a fair bit. So I have doubled this one up because I'm familiar with this thread and I know that double is good for this. Um, you can use it singly, you'll get really nice details with it, but if you want to fill something out a bit, two strands of this is good. Because it's got a nice texture of wool, so it's not going to be nice and shiny like the other threads we've looked at so far. It's got a really beautiful texture to it. And because it's got that acrylic in it as well, it stitches really nicely. Wool can be quite difficult to stitch with. It's got all the little fibres on it that stick out and catch. And this is just a lot smoother than that. So this goes in really nicely. It really is a pleasure to stitch with this one. You can see how nicely that's filling in. Nice and even, even though I'm using the two strands for this. I've got this in a number seven cruel needle, or you can try number five if you want to. Just putting the last few stitches in. You can see how neat that one looks because it hasn't got a, a twist on it. It's got a fine twist in the thread, but when you're using two together, you don't see that much, not like the perlay thread. So it covers really beautifully this one. It looks textured, but not too textured. So there we go, so that's the last one. So let's look at another kind of wool now. So we're going to look at 100% wool now. So we've looked at the mix, so this is the real deal. So this is um, an Appleton's um, Cruel wool. Now there are other makes available. Um, not so easy to get the Cruel wool. So the Cruel wool is just a two ply. A tapestry wool is a four ply. So that's the difference between the two. So this is much finer. Um, I've dyed this one myself. Again, this one's with poppy petals. Um, if you want to see how I did that, I do have a video on um, that process and how I did that. Um, so I'm going to use this one. So I've got some threaded up here. Now I'm going to use quite a large circle here. This is quite a thicker thread really compared to some of the threads I've been using but I'm going to double this one up as well because I've got a larger circle so there isn't a hard and fast rule about how many strands you should use come apart do that again And sort of gauging how many threads I want to use depending on what it is I'm stitching. So don't worry about following rules and oh no, it must be this many for this thing that I'm doing. Do have an experiment and see what you like the look of the most. Um, I'm using a fairly large needle for this. I've actually gone to a chenille needle, which has a much bigger eye than the embroidery needles to get the two strands in. Right across there. 
Now this is a bit tougher to stitch with. I don't know if you can hear the noise it makes as it goes through. You can hear it a lot more. It's got all these little fibres on it, which is what wool has. It's got these little staples on it um, and they make the thread a bit rougher and when it goes through the fabric you can hear that. So make sure your needle is plenty big enough so you don't wear the thread. Nice short lengths for this thread because it does wear more easily. But it's great to use if you want a traditional thread. There's lots of colours available in this particular range and it's most like what they would have used back in the 1700s. If you want something authentic, this is quite a good one to use. But it is a little bit harder to stitch with, so just go slowly with it. Make sure your needle is big enough. Nice short lengths and you should find it's okay. near the end of this now. It's taken quite a few um, needles full of <laughs> thread to do this, even though I'm using it double because I'm using those short lengths, I'm re-threading quite a lot, but that's okay. If you struggle with this thread, that is the key. Nice short lengths and a bigger needle and you should be fine. But you can see that texture there. It's quite smooth, but it's got the texture of wool. It's obviously wool. Um, it's got a nice soft feel to it quite raised so you can get a nice thick stitch with this one um, so just follow those two rules and you should be good with um, the cruel wool. So we're going to try a different kind of a thread now we're going to delve into the world of silk um, now this is a massive subject on its own so I will do a video just about silk thread I think so but I'll just mention it now lots of different kinds so the first one I want to look at is a twisted one it's got a couple of brands here so um, this Northern Lights one um, I got in the US but it's Chinese silk um, and this is actually a stranded one so you can take the strands apart and this one is a silk mill one um, and it's slightly different texture so a bit shiny and a bit more texture on this um, so this is stranded as well but the twists are a little bit more um, prominent so they just look slightly different depending on which brand you have so I'm going to try the uh, silk mill ones and I've got this colour here. So I'm going to use three strands of this one because I've got quite a large area to cover and it's quite fine and it's beautiful and <laughs> silky smooth as you'd expect it to be. Silk. Oh, that's so nice when that goes through that you can just feel the difference especially after just doing the wool as well just using the wool when you can hear it going through the fabric and all those little fibers catching this feels completely different now obviously um silk's a bit more expensive so you want to think carefully if you want to use silk and how much of it you're going to need because it is a lot more expensive if you want to practice some stitches that you would do in the silk you could practice them in the stranded cotton and then do them in the silk because the weights are very similar and you don't really want to waste your silk thread if you're practicing something so that's a little tip for you it does really go in very nicely beautifully through the fabric and I'm using a linen fabric here with a backing on it as well so it's going through the two layers very nicely indeed and this one has got quite a twist to it so I'm expecting it to look a little bit textured but shiny at the same time now what you can see is happening is these um, threads are just separating a little bit so you have to just be careful with this that you keep the threads together if you're using more than one thread if you want very fine detail you can just use one so what you can do in that instance is you could use a laying tool got one here so this is a malore so this is specific to gold work but any laying tool is fine great big tapestry needle if you haven't got a laying tool but you can just use this to help you guide it down and keep the tension on those threads so this applies to anything you're using more than one strand of but this silk because it's particularly shiny is separating very easily so that's just a little bit of an extra aid to help you use it just holding it up guiding that down so all my three strands are together at the same tension so at the end of this circle now, I really like using the silk, it goes through so nicely. You can get away with slightly longer threads because of that, it's not wearing so much. 
um, but silk does have a shelf life so do think about that if you were making an heirloom or if you're repairing something or um, restoring something because if you keep it um, if it's in the damp or in the sunshine it does start to rot the silk and you may find um, you've seen some old pieces and the silk is the bit that's all disintegrated um, because it's not been kept well so do think about using it from that point of view if you're restoring something you may want to consider modern equivalents that will last a little bit longer and obviously the cost as well it is more expensive um, but it does stitch really really beautifully and it is a pleasure to work with so we've looked at real silk. Now, what happens if you wanted a cheaper alternative that doesn't rot in 250 years time? Well, you could try a rayon. So here's one brand of rayon. This is an anchor one, it's an anchor marlet, but it is 100% rayon, viscose rayon on the back. So it's sort of got the feel and look of silk, but it's not quite the same. And I can already feel it, just threaded my needle up, I always already feel it. it's not quite as soft and silky. A silk is <laughs> um, but it's supposed to be a good alternative to it that's not actually silk so let's try it out and see what we've got so it is nice and shiny I'm expecting it to go in nicely so I've got two strands of this here so it is got a twist has got a twist to it and I've got two strands together now it kind of feels a little bit more wiry than silk I can sort of see it kind of kinking and it's a bit harder to control, I think, than natural silk. So we'll see how we get on. Mm, it is nice and smooth. It doesn't look quite the same. I just cut myself another thread to finish off and it's definitely got more of a kink to it than the silk has it's a bit more wiry and not as soft um, as the silk is but it is dare I say it um, shinier than the silk so if you wanted that effect you might want to consider rayon instead and you can see the twist more clearly as well and it's actually nicer than I remember it I did use it for a project um, a while ago and remember not being particularly keen but Quite liking stitching with it now to be honest so just finish off these last few stitches so a good alternative to silk if you wanted something a bit more durable this one washes at 95 degrees so you can get it nice and hot so if you wanted to make something that was going to be washed regularly um, cushion covers or tablecloths um, this would be a good thing to consider because it's going to take that wear and tear that silk isn't going to so a good reason to use this instead of the silk. So just on my last stitch there. And you can see that next to the silk one for comparison. I will put a picture of this up at the end so you can see them all together. So that's a rayon thread. So we're going to go back to real silk now, but we're going to look at a silk floss or an unspun silk. So I've got one here and they look very, very beautiful um, and they're very, very fine thread. I hope that you can see how fine that is there. Um, this hasn't been spun. It's the silk fibres and they've just been put together so that they're not spun, they're not twisted, which can cause some problems. So the best way to deal with this is to somehow stick the fibres together while you stitch with it. Now, I know people have said to me in the past that you can use beeswax on a silk thread. So if you see my gold work videos, we wax the thread a lot with block of beeswax like that um, and that just sticks the fibres together and helps them to go smoothly through the fabric and prevents them from being cut so much by the gold thread um, but I know people have used it as well on the twisted silk that I tried earlier um, just to stick the fibres together um, while you stitch with it so that is an option. Um, another one I like for this thread is just some water so I got myself a water spray and a piece of kitchen towel paper towel and I'm just going to dampen this it doesn't need to be really wet 
and I find the best way that this works is we're just going to run the thread through the damp towel and that will stick the fibres together just long enough for us to stitch with it and when we finish stitching with it it will dry and it will all look nice and beautiful and the beeswax is putting a coating of something on the silk thread and I'm always not sure about that actually coating the embroidery thread with the beeswax so this is another method that I'm going to try this time so I've got some threaded here now I've done two strands and it's like I can only describe as what it must be like to embroider with them um, spiders web. I've never done that, but it's it can barely feel it. It's it's kind of hardly there. If you have rough hands or if you like gardening, you may not want to use this silk because um it will catch every little rough part of your fingers will catch this thread and it can get really noisy. So make sure you've got nice smooth skin if you want to use this. And then all I'm going to do is just run it through the damp paper towel first. And it's just stuck that fibres together a little bit so that I can stitch with it. So it is like the Emperor's New Clothes. It's like they're not stitching with anything. It feels quite strange. But if you're familiar with the Chinese embroidery and Japanese embroidery as well that use these threads a lot, very, very, very beautiful and delicate pieces. But it is like you're not stitching with anything. So the problem is, I can just feel that pulling is going to be keeping them together. So I will use my laying tool again, my malaw, just to try and keep the tension on those. And it's so soft, very shiny, very smooth to stitch with. Feels like there's nothing there. And then if you just feel it's starting to pull a little bit or it's separating or it's catching on your fingers, you can just run it through the paper towel again. Just stick the fibres together and that will just dry normally. That won't have any other effect than that. I always found using this that that works really well. Just controls it while you stitch with it because... It's hard to stitch with something you can't feel. And because it's got no twist on it, there won't be a texture to this, so hopefully it'll all just be nice and shiny, but it's very fine. It's quite difficult to get this super neat. You've got to have a very fine needle. I've got a number 10 embroidery for this, but it could even go to a 12. So if anyone's done any Japanese embroidery with this thread, proper Japanese embroidery. Um, they do have a way of twisting it through their hands. Um, I think they lick their hands and they twist it, something like that. Um, I don't know what that method is, so I'm not going to do it. But um, it's kind of doing the same thing, really, sticking those fibres together while you stitch with them. This is quite difficult to stitch with. This is by far the worst circle of all of them. It's very fine. I'm trying to do it under the camera as well, in my defence. Um, but it is tricky to stitch with, so if you want to use this silk, I definitely recommend practising with it first. It's very fine. Um, there's 80 metres on that little reel, so there's quite a lot to play with. It's probably one of those things you need to use the actual thing to practise with, rather than practise with something else, because there's nothing quite like this thread and I'm seeing being super delicate with it and I still haven't got my tension great so definitely use a laying tool with it as well um, but it is like nothing else it is beautiful and smooth and shiny um, you can get some really lovely shiny effects with that so worth persevering with um, but do practice with it first so going from one extreme to the other now, so after the very fine, delicate uh, silk floss, we're going to go to a linen thread. So I did look at this linen thread in detail um, in another video. So this is a Studio Flax linen thread. So if you want to know all about this thread, do check that out. I'm going to do that in this one here. So a nice big chunky thread now, which is nice. But it does stitch um, a lot nicer than I was expecting to. I was expecting linen to be quite rough um, and to not go through the fabric very well. But it does. It goes through beautifully. So we're going to try that one next to this silk one here. I've got a large needle for this. I'm using a chenille needle. Number 22 or 24 is good for this particular thread. It feels massive after that silk thread. But it does go through really beautifully and you might think linen is a kind of a working thread really, a linen thread. 
but these colours are gorgeous and I really did enjoy using them and making a project out of them. Nice to use something a bit different. Obviously really really strong thread and um, you're not going to break this thread at all. But despite the texture of it and it being linen it is actually really nice to stitch with. It's nice and smooth, goes in nice and quickly. So if you wanted something maybe a little bit more rustic or more traditional you could try this thread. You don't ply this thread. It's um, it's twisted so you use it as it is off the skein. Don't try and separate it because you can't do that with this thread. So just cut yourself one length and I'm just using a single one now. No need to double this one up. It's thick enough as it is but you can still get some nice details with this. I did try some smaller stitches in that other video and it did come out really nicely. So even though it looks big and chunky you can still do nice detail and as with the pearl thread as well I just put a running stitch and um, a running stitch a back stitch around this circle here because I didn't want it to lift too much from the surface if I'd done a split stitch it would have been a bit chunky so I just did a back stitch just to give myself that nice edge to stitch over it helps you get a much more even circle so I finished that circle off quite quickly, it goes in nice and quick this thread and one more thing that you can do with this is you can burnish it so you can make it shiny. So if you just rub the needle back and forth or indeed use your laying tool, so don't dig that in the end and you can just rub that back and forth and that gives it an extra shine as well. So tough thread, you can do, <laughs> do what you like with it basically and there you go, nice and shiny thread. So really good one to have a little play with. So the last thread I want to tack is a metallic thread. Now we've got a really in-depth video on how to do this because I know this strikes fear <laughs> into many embroiderers is metallic thread and how awful it is to use. So I've got a really good video about that telling you all about them and some little hints and tips on how to deal with them and how to show them that you're in charge. So we're going to use some of that for the last one. Um, there's lots of different types of metallic thread available. I'm just going to use this DMC um, thread here. So it is a stranded and it's got lots of strands. I think there's about 10 in this and each one of those is twisted as well. Um, it's quite rough to the feel and this is where the problems come in with it going through the fabric and it ripping and you do a few stitches and it all breaks and it's really annoying. So um, basically large needle short threads basically with this. So I'm going to, I mean you can see it coming apart anyway, I was going to say pull two strands out but it's already falling apart. So um, we're going to take two out come out really easily. Um, big needle. Let's try this one. This is a number five cruel needle. And if you can hear it and it doesn't feel right, make your needle size bigger. Take it up a needle size and you'll know pretty quickly if you've got the wrong one. This might be too small. So you can hear the noise that makes. It's going to make a noise. It's it's a metallic thread. It's just deciding how much noise is too much noise, really. So if it starts to disintegrate on you, I think I will go up a needle size in a second. Let's put one stitch in. Feels okay, but it is making quite a lot of noise, so let's just do a couple and see how it feels. Let's get rid of our waist knot. Yeah, not really liking that. The other thing that happens with this as well is that I've got two strands in the needle, but when the needle goes through, it's actually four strands and the needle, so it's making quite a big hole. So I'm going to change my needle size up and see what that sounds like. So I've gone up to a chenille needle because this has a long, thin eye, so it will take the threads much more easily. So this is a chenille 22, so let's see. Yeah, I can still hear it, but it doesn't feel like I'm fighting it so much. So you kind of have to sit, have a conversation with your metallic thread and it tells you, it says no, 
that doesn't feel right, do something about it. So you have to listen to what it's telling you, basically. That feels much better, larger needle is much better. I can still hear it, but it's going through much more easily now. So once you get going with it, it's not too bad. So you can get your needle size right, that nice short length, as I said. Now the ends are beginning to come apart now. So I'm going to do this stitch and then I'm going to swap it and put another thread in, start a new thread. Because you can see them separating now. So don't battle on with it if it's not right. Finish it, start a new thread. And you'll get on much better with it. So at the end of this one, I think I've won the battle. <laughs> it's, it's a tricky one to stitch with. So don't do it when you're tired or you're a bit short tempered because you'll just get really cross with it and throw it across the room. But definitely worth persevering with. And the key is nice short lengths for this, definitely. So I've started and stopped my thread many times and put new threads in this. But it does look quite nice and it's a really nice way of adding an extra little bit of sparkle to your work. So let's have a look at them all together and see how they compare. So here we have them all together. So I think you'll agree lots of nice different textures and looks um, going on there. And it's been really good for me actually to try all these different threads. It's easy to stick to the same ones, um, ones you're familiar with and ones you know, but it's good to push the boundaries and see what else you can use as well. So I'll put a list of all of these threads that I've used in the description below this video so you can see what they are and dig around in your own stash and see what you've got. Um, draw some circles or any shape you like, um, have a little go with them, see what properties they have and see what what you like because you might discover something really exciting. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and this little look at all these different threads. Do give us a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to check out all our other videos. We've got loads and loads going on there. See if you can find something you like. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.